So in this short video we're going to talk about meiosis um, with the accompanying animation. Hopefully we can help you understand the process a little bit better as um, it can be somewhat complicated. Um, but you will also notice that there are quite a few similarities to mitosis. Um, so look for those similarities and then study the differences which will really help you when it comes to the exam. So let's get started. So let's just explain a few things here. The, the lighter blue section uh, or circle is going to be the cytoplasm of the cell um, and the darker blue will be the nucleus of the cell. So keep that in mind as we go through this animation. So in interface uh, the cell is functioning normally. The chromosomes are inside the nucleus uh, and are spread out or uncoiled and the cell is just functioning normally, much like interphase in mitosis. Um, a big difference between meiosis and mitosis is there are two steps or stages of meiosis. So notice here we have prophase 1. Um, there will also be a prophase 2. So uh, it will be very important to be able to know those differences um, of what happens in prophase 1 and prophase 2 and be able to distinguish those on the exam. Um, so make sure you have all the stages correct in your mind. So in prophase 1, um, the nucleus breaks down and the chromosomes condense so that they can be seen even with the microscope. Um, there are two other really important things that occur in prophase 1. That is that homologous chromosomes pair up um, or chromosomes that are the same length and carrying the same genes will pair up together. Um, and these are also called tetrads. So tetra meaning four. And so there are four chromatids. So that's where that word comes from. So these tetrads line are pair up during prophase one. And also crossing over occurs. So right here you'll notice that these two chromosomes are literally crossing each other. Um, so what crossing over is, is it's the exchange of some genetic information um, on these chromosomes. So this portion of the red chromosome would actually be part of the blue chromosome and this section of the blue chromosome would become the red, part of the red chromosome. Now that's not depicted in this animation but um, crossing over is something you will be responsible for on the exam. So if that didn't make se sense make sure you uh, look it up in your book or on the internet. So that is prophase 1. Um, metaphase 1 is when these tetrads or homologous pairs line up on the midplate of the cell. Um, and a key idea here is the how the tetrads line up. Notice here that all the blue are on one side and the red are on the other. That's completely by chance. Um, in real life, the cells, these chromosomes or tetrads will line up completely independent of each other. So the blues can line up on one side or the reds can line up on the other um, or as depicted here now we have the blue on the left side the red um, or so we've switched this one so the red and the blue have switched places here um, and this is actually the idea of independent assortment or the law of independent assortment so each tetrad will a sort independent of all of the other chromosomes as they line up on the midplate. Um, so that's also a key idea for you to understand on the exam. So now we move on to anaphase. Anaphase 1 is where the tetrads are pulled apart. Um, notice here that now we are moving we've moved from six chromosomes to three. Um, so let's move to telophase 1 and cytokinesis. So notice here as these two cells um, split, so that would be telophase 1, um, or cytokinesis is where the two cells split. Notice here that we have three chromosomes here and three over here. 
um, instead of having the six chromosomes. This is called a haploid state, or having half the number of chromosomes. Before we began at diploid, um, and all through mitosis, we are always in a diploid state. Um, but this is the big key, and the whole purpose of meiosis is to come down to this haploid state so that when gametes, uh, when the sperm fertilizes the egg, the, uh, the resulting zygote will have the correct number of chromosomes. If they didn't have half, we would have double the number of chromosomes, and as we talked about with non-disjunction, um, even one extra chromosome can be catastrophic and result in miscarriage. So becoming haploid is a essential um, idea and the whole purpose of meiosis. So in telophase one, um, the nucleus uh, reforms and the chromosomes decondense. Um, so now notice we have two cells, and again they are both haploid, um, and both of these cells will go through the next part of meiosis. Um, but we're only going to follow one of these cells through the process. So prophase two, um, and actually the this whole process, uh, uh, meiosis two, is exactly like mitosis, and you will hopefully be able to recognize the similarities as we go through this. So in prophase two, the nucleus breaks down and the uh, DNA or chromosomes condense. Um, then we go to metaphase two, where the chromosomes line up on the midplate of the cell. Anaphase two is where sister chromatids are pulled apart. We have telophase two in cytokinesis, so two cells begin to form, and we have uh, the nucleus which reforms and the DNA decondenses. So now after both of those cells have gone through the second stage of meiosis, we result in four new haploid cells. Um, so notice each of these cells inside the nucleus only have three chromosomes, um, which is again the whole idea. So when we'll pretend that if this was an egg here and this was a sperm here, when they come together, they will now have. Um, the diploid number or the, the six chromosomes which this cell originally started with. So that is meiosis. Hopefully this animation helped you understand it in a little more detail and simplified it a little bit for you.